All righty. Well, we're going to move on now to my favorite part in the evening, uh, which is where I get to sit back, relax, learn some stuff and listen to uh, an expert. So tonight we have Corey Dodd, who is going to be talking to us about no code guide to building a custom work press website in oxygen so uh, i met corey uh, back in the days when we we're allowed to actually physically meet uh, at a uh, wordpress uh, or what they call word camps he was a speaker there amazing designer really good teacher in terms of uh, what he talks about as well so you're in for a real treat tonight uh, and he's going to walk us through so the ins and outs of uh, creating a fast responsive fully custom WordPress website um, using, um, you know, a page builder called Oxygen. And he's going to sort of show us, you know, what sort of advantages you have using something like this as well too. So Corey, as I say, he's a web designer. He's been in the web design industry for about 25 years, uh, runs a branding agency called El Creative. He lives in uh, Victoria uh, down in, um, oh, well, down in Victoria, <laughs> I'm <in> Melbourne <laughs> down in Victoria. So. Geelong, actually. So, uh, but he, yeah, <laughs> but he teaches designers and business owners to build uh, custom websites in Oxygen, and he's got a whole course on it as well, too. So let's put our hands together and welcome along Corey Dodd. Yay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a quick screen share here. So let's see what I've got. Um, I'll bring up a couple of things. Hold shift. There we go. That's what it was. So hopefully we're seeing my screen. You can see that, Nick? See that loud and clear. Awesome. All right. Well, I don't need to do my intro about me. Um, that's uh, that was going to be my intro, but Nick's already Nick's already done that for me. So um, yeah. So I've been designing for about twenty five years. So I want to sort of make that really um, prominent thing that I, I'm a designer first. Um, I'm, I'm not really a developer, um, and I've been using a tool called Oxygen, um, and using that to build websites for my clients essentially as a designer. Um, so I'm just going to open up Oxygen here, and so you can see the website, and I'll give you a little bit of information about Oxygen. Um, one of the best things about Oxygen, well, is is the price point. Unlike other page builders, it is a lifetime deal. I've been using this for quite a few years, um, and it is a single a single fee. You pay it once, and you can use it on as many websites as you want. Um, so that's a real benefit, even if you're just using it on one website. Um, it does come in a few different flavors, and that is a basic version, which just lets you build stuff. There is one that allows you to add WooCommerce. Um, then a level that allows for what we call Gutenberg customization, which is what WordPress uses for its content now. And then there is like a, an ultimate one that has a few extra features. Um, if you are going to go down the down this path, I would probably suggest you go for the agency level just because it has the Gutenberg block builder. And that's something that I utilize quite a lot. It's something that's a part of WordPress of its core now. So it's is a part of WordPress's future. So it's worth sort of considering. Um, and the best thing with Oxygen is it really integrates well with, with Gutenberg. So um, you can create content in, in Gutenberg in WordPress natively and have that come into your Oxygen design. Um, another thing that's great with Oxygen is the speed. So the, the, the load times um, when you're building the sites in Oxygen, and this is one of the reasons that attracted me and so many developers to Oxygen, is because it's very, very clean as far as the code is concerned. The output of code is really, really light, which means that the websites are super fast. I've rebuilt sites that um, load the load speeds were at about 28% in, um, in the Google speed tests. And they're getting into the 90s with, with when they're rebuilt in Oxygen, which is absolutely amazing. That's not doing anything crazy and putting on, you know, all this compression. This is essentially out of the box because it is so well, uh, because the code is so clean. Um, all right. Now, I've got quite a lot to go through here. So what I'm going to actually just do is presume that we've got WordPress installed. I'm not going to take things back to the very, very start. So this is a website that's got WordPress installed. And I've got a couple of plugins in here, which you can see I've got Oxygen and the one that has the Gutenberg integration. And I've got something called custom post type UI, which allowed me to add a section for projects. Um, I was going to set, I've tried to set up something that's got a little bit of content in here. So if we go into projects here, I've got this set up as if it's a website with some projects. And I do have some pages here. So this is just an introduction to 
the content that's in WordPress. Um, if I go into a project here and I actually edit a project, you can have a quick look at what's in here. So it's pretty simple stuff. I've just got some text, the heading, and I think there is a photo here. Let's minimize this as a, a, a featured image for each project. And that's all there is. Now let's have a quick look on the front end now that Oxygen is installed. I've, I've got Oxygen installed. So if I go to the actual front end of the website really quickly, you'll see that basically it, it does nothing. That's just the content that I've got for the homepage. There's no navigation or anything. And that's because Oxygen removes themes. So it, it essentially doesn't use a theme and you can start from scratch. If you're building custom websites, that's really exciting. If you don't want to build custom websites, that can seem really daunting. Um, but I'll quickly show you when you first install Oxygen, you get this welcome screen and you can install a blank version of Oxygen or you can install pre-made websites. It actually has a library. Here they are. This is the library that it comes with. There's it's probably close to 20 different um, designs that it, that it has. And you can essentially pick one of these, install it, and you can preview these. So this is one of them, for example, and all the pages and everything come in. You've got all of that, all of that content, all of the all of the functionality. It all comes across into um, your website, and then you can start to customize it and and tweak from there. Um, but I'm specifically excited about building custom websites from scratch, and so this is something that I would use or design for a client. So this is just an example site, and I'm going to base what I'm going to try and do tonight. I've only got an hour, so I'll see how much stuff I can get through. I'm going to try and highlight some of the features with Oxygen with building out some of this stuff. And I've exported some of these images and I've already got them in Oxygen. So I'm going to close this one down. I don't need this one. And oops, I'll go back to full screen. I don't need this one. And I can go to a blank install because I'm going to start with things super, super clean and basic. So now if I go into Oxygen, we've got a few settings. I'm not going to go through all of these right now, but there's some really basic sort of settings around caches, um, the sorts of fonts and stuff that you might want to load if you want to load cost custom fonts. It does come connected to Google font, so you can use any font that Google has, which is great. But the first thing we want to do is actually go into templates and there's nothing there. So I'm going to create a template. I'm going to call this I have a naming convention and, and one refers to if something is an actual core template that's using content and then I'll use two if it's a reusable part and I'll explain reusable parts in a minute. So I'm going to call this inside page and we can publish this. We've got a few settings outside of Oxygen before we even get inside and this is to say how we want this template to be used. Um, so you could actually say single pages. You could spe specify a page, like you could create this for an about page or for your home page, or different types of pages like posts or your media pages, etc. But there is a section here where you can say catch all, and that means that every single page is going to use this template. And then if we want to have pages that use different templates, we can actually put a priority here, which is more than zero. We give it a priority of one. That's a type of page we'll grab that template. It sounds confusing, but once you get into it, it's it's fairly straightforward. And the other great thing is um, when you're on a page, so if I go into a page just really quickly, and I go into a page, if we edit this, you have the ability to switch templates down here. So it's grabbing the inside template because I've created that. If I had multiple templates, you can actually force this to grab a totally different template, and a totally different look. Okay, so I've created this template. And if I go into edit with oxygen, I'll be greeted with the actual oxygen um, interface. And there's a fair bit of stuff to go over here. I'm probably going to breeze through this fairly quickly. Um, so forgive me if, if there's, there's a lot going on. Um, so this is the blank screen, essentially your canvas for your website. And we've got a few controls. Um, along the top is this first part here is essentially what page we're previewing. I've got no content displaying in this yet, but you can preview different pages through Oxygen. Um, and then we have the ability to add different sections. So if we click add, you'll see all of this stuff opens up. And these are some of the pre-built things that we may want to use. So these are just really, really basic um, things like a heading, text, 
um, a section. We've got things like buttons. Um, but if we've if we've installed a um, a library, one of those design sets, you can actually get through all, all of the design sets here. So if we have a quick look at some of these, um, you can see all of these parts, and you can just drag and drop these that are already made into your design or into your website. But again, I'm going to focus on this custom stuff. So I want to add something like a section. And if I add that, you'll see that I've just got this purple outline um, that's showing us what's going on. Now, if I will, if I open up this part on the top section, it gives me the structure. So if I add, say, another section, you can see that section's added in here. I can rename these. Um, and this part here where I went to add on the left hand side, now that I've added something, if I click that, it gives me the ability to style it. And it's consistent no matter what. So if I put into this section, now I've got this section selected. If I put in, say, a heading, we've got the same, same options. You can go into advanced and you can set stuff like the colors that you want for the text, etc. So I'm going to look at some stuff that are global settings. And I think this is really exciting with Oxygen. Um, it allows us to create global settings and then change this stuff site wide. So if I bring up our settings here, manage settings, and I go to page settings, sorry, and I go to global settings. I can set things like the types of fonts that I want to use. And I think for my headings, I wanted railway and it's already changed it. And if I want for my normal text, I want to have, um, I think Poppins. So this is fonts that I've designed. You can actually just test these out. And also anytime you've got text, if you wanted to use a different font, you can actually load something different as well. So it connects to, as I've already said, Google fonts. Um, so I wanted Ray away there. Okay, so that's our, our global settings for fonts. And we can do the same things with colors. We can set some global colors. And these are something that you do when you first set up a site, but then once you get into it, you're probably not going to think too much about this. I'm going to go back to my design here and grab a few things like this color. And I know I'm going fast here, but I'm going to call this highlight and just paste this color in. I'm going to go back, get this dark color in and add a color base. And essentially what I'm doing here is building up a library of colors um, that we're going to use throughout the site, which will a, keep things really consistent um, and just means that we can get to them. And also it means that later on, if we wanted to change a color, we can go back and it's going to change these colors everywhere on the site, which is really, really um, handy. I'm going to call this light. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add a color for white just because I'm going to use it often. So now that I've added these, actually that's not a pure white. So now that I've added these, if I go anywhere where, where my colors show up, I can actually select these and my colors now show up. So I can set these as the background and set that as our text color, for example. So you can see that using global styles um, is really, really handy. We can set global styles for things like how wide we want our pages to be, um, think like how what, it, what our, we want our links to be, what colors we want. Um, our certain breakpoints, all sorts of stuff, which is really, really handy. All right, I'm going to quickly go back to the design. I'm going to have a look at this page here and just see what, I, what, what I've got going on. So I've got a section where I've got my logo, I've got some navigation, some social icons, and I've got a heading area. So this heading area here, I'm going to remove this um, background color, or I could leave a dark background color in here. And I can go into the advanced section, into the background, and now I can put a background image in, which I've already uploaded. If I go select image, and I can make this fit so it's cover. You can see that I've got a background image already fitting in there. And I can actually just drag this space around that heading. I can just make this taller just by dragging this around. So I can kind of set this. But if I wanted to be really fussy, I can go into size and spacing and actually set specific padding. So I might say 150, 150 and get it precise, or I could even set um, specific heights. So we've got that heading, 
that background in there. We want to change that text. Now, something that's really great with Oxygen is that we can insert what we call dynamic data, which sounds really complicated, um, but this is where the, the no code and the customization really um, become important because this is the sort of thing that you may have needed code for in the past. If we want to have this as a template and we want every single page to be picking up whatever the page title is and changing dynamically, we can actually go to insert data and then we can go to something like title and insert that title. And now we can see that that says growling frogs, which is the title of our project. And if I select different things, you'll see that that's actually changing that content on the fly, no matter what page I pick. And that would be replicated on the front of the website too. If I click save, and then I go to the website on the front end, it should show the home page, and you can see that that's being reflected right there. How's everyone going? Is that is that going okay so far? It's fairly fast. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going through this stuff. Um, so that's the basis of of I guess adding some of the stuff to Oxygen. Um, I'm going to add something called inner content and how I explained before that um, WordPress uses something called Gutenberg. And when you create pages, you can just add the text in. It's basically like using word. You can just type in text. So if we click add and we add in something called the inner content that's putting there and that's grabbing all the text from that page. Now it's put it in the wrong spot, but I can grab this here and drag it into that section that I wanted to go into. And you can see now it's moved that into the section. So I've got a few things happening. It's starting to look a little bit more like a website. What I'm gonna do is add another section and I'm gonna classify this one as my footer. I'll give this a background color. I think that's what the background color had in there of the footer. No, it's, it's a dark, it's, it's the mid gray. So it's this mid gray and it has a dark gray above it. But unlike this, um, the stuff that we've built so far, I'm gonna right click on this one and I'm gonna make this a reusable part. So I'm gonna call this two and footer. And this means that we can access this anywhere in other templates. So if we created a specific template for the home page, for example, we could add that into the home page. And then anywhere that we update this reusable part, it's going to update across the whole website. Now you can create things that aren't reusable parts and they just um, update locally. For example, this heading here, um, this section with the background image, that's not something I've made as a reusable part. So if I create a home page template, it's not going to come across. Um, so one thing, of course, that we're going to have to add is a navigation area. So I've got something called the header builder. If I click this and add the header builder in, I'll drag this up to the top. And you can see it's got essentially a few sections in here where we can put some of our content. So I'm gonna actually add the logo, add an image. And from this, I can browse and grab the logo. And I'm going to wanna to have some navigation. So it does come with menus already set up. So if I go menu, there's actually a couple of different options. We've got a pro menu and a standard menu. I'm gonna use the pro menu and it allows for a little bit more customization. So if I go to insert that, you'll see let's put it in the same place and I'll just drag this so it's over to the right. And already I've got something in there that kind of looks a little bit more like a website. And the pro menu just comes down to a little bit of styling. And also the header builder has some really cool features. So one feature is that if we select the header builder, you can see in this left hand area, we can do a few things like make it sticky, which means that when we um, scroll down the page, it will stick up to the top. So I'll actually save this, refresh. I'll make this so we can have a quick look scroll down and you can see that that menu that menu is now reappears in front of everything now it doesn't have a background color so we can see through that's not great but we can fix that in the settings another setting that it has is to actually go out of the sticky 
is to overlay it over our header. So if we go to overlay, we can say always, and now it's in front of that image and it starts to look a lot more like the design that I had set up or the idea that I had for the website, it's starting to look a lot more like this with that floating over the top of our um, photo there. Another thing is that it's, it's full width. So if I go into advanced size and spacing, I can control that width. So at the moment it's set to the default, which is the page width. But I can say full width and everything goes out to the edge. Now that image, I might want to do a few things just quickly, just so this looks a little bit better, which is just add a little bit of padding, et cetera, around this, just so it's not so tight. You can change the size to anything that you want specifically. Um, I might make it a little bit smaller, for example, like 200 pixels. Oops, that's larger, 150 pixels. Or I might leave it as is because it actually was about right, but I'm just showing that setting there. So I've deleted that out there and we've got our logo set up. We've got our menu, which, well, isn't perfect, um, but we've got something there. So if I click the menu, anytime you click something, the left hand area becomes the area where we control the settings for that. So we can go into the desktop area, for example, and we can change stuff like the typeface that it has, things like the color. So I want to have this as white. I want to make that font weight just not so heavy, just a little bit lighter. Um, I'm going to want to have some spacing between these. So it's not all cramped up. So if I add some spacing between these, maybe 20 pixels between them, and I might put that on every single edge and we can see now that I've got that menu and it's starting to look a little bit better. Um, this reference that there's a drop down here and I can change the settings on the drop down if I want. And I've also got things like the hover. So on the background, um, sorry, when we hover over this, we can change the background. And we can see that that's actually changing color now that we hover over that. Now I'm gonna click save and just go to the front end of the website so we can see what's going on. Now this isn't a real menu. I haven't actually created a menu for the site yet. And this is a WordPress feature. Um, this is something that I love and not all page builders work the same way, but you can actually go into Oxygen, sorry, into WordPress and create as many menus as you want. So I'm gonna call this main menu, click create menu. I can actually add any page here. So most recent, click add to menu. I should be able to add the home, add to menu. And then all I can do is drag these and drop them into whatever order I want. Probably contact details last, projects near the second last. Click save menu. And I'm pretty sure that Oxygen is smart enough to know that now I've added a menu to use that menu. Yes, it's grabbed that menu automatically. Now, if you have more than one menu in this menu section under pro menu, we actually have the ability to select what menu we're looking at. Because I've changed that, I'm gonna click save and refresh just to make sure it's grabbing that information. But you can already see that really quickly, we've got the basis of, well, a website starting. And just similarly to how I created that global um, reusable part for the footer, I'm gonna do the same here with the navigation. Um, and then I'm gonna actually jump in to creating a homepage template so we can see how that works. So again, I'm gonna open up that structure, open up the header builder, and we can see this pro menu. And as I mentioned before, now we've added a main menu, we can select that. But if there was multiple menus, we could also um, specify which one we wanted to load there. All right, I'm gonna click save. And now what I'm gonna do is actually jump out of Oxygen here. And I'm gonna create a new template by going back into the dashboard, going to templates. And you can see here what's loading up now is the inside template and that reusable um, footer. Actually, actually, I totally forgot to make a reusable um, part for the navigation. So I'm gonna quickly, quickly open that up again. And while that's loading, I'm gonna to start to make the basis of the homepage template. So I'm gonna call that one homepage. 
And with this one, I want to make sure that this is our front page because that's what um, WordPress refers to as the home page. I'm going to give that a priority of one, which means that it's more important than zero. So it's going to overwrite that catch all setting. So if I click publish now, that's set up and ready to go. I can jump back into this inside template and just make sure I click this little icon here and go to make reusable, call this to navigation and click OK. So I'm going to click save and then close this one down. So I've not done a ton of stuff in the home in the inside page, but I've got enough so that it's actually starting to take shape. And so now I can go into this home page template and start to add some stuff specifically to the home page. All right. Well, while that's loading, I'll have a quick look at the design and see what things differ on this home page. All right. So we've got this sort of key feature text here. We've got a few things like this intro text. So I'll get some of these things set up so we can start to see how we can grab different things from the um, reusable library and mix that with new, um, new sections or new layouts. So first thing I'm going to do is click add and I'm going to actually go down to reusable, put in the navigation and you can put it in as single, which means that it references the, um, the, the version in the library or editable, which means it disconnects it from the library and it means that you can actually break it and start to play with it without um, overriding the global version of this reusable part. So I'm going to put in the navigation, I'm going to put in the footer as a single, and then I need to put in um, a section. And again, I'm going to just change the order of this. So this one is going to be our background for the home page. So I'll put in a background image. I'll browse for the different background image that we use on the home page. And this one, I'm going to change the height a little bit. So I'm going to also, you can control how that background um, where it's placed. So I'm going to change the position here a little bit. So left 50% and top 50%. So we're looking at the middle part of that image. And then I can change that height of this. So I want this to be fairly tall. I'm going to make this a um, percentage of the window. So I can go to view height and I can say something like 70% of the actual window. So now we've got that set up. Um, I can put in my heading inside this section, add heading. I can copy and paste that text. That's not looking great, but we've got it in there. There's a few things we probably want to do. I'm going to change the text so that it's white. And we probably want to change the text as well. Um, so we want to change that font weight. We might need to do this on the heading itself. So if we go to the heading, I'll just have a quick look what this was like. It's quite light and quite big. So I'm going to make this so it's a lighter font. So about 200 um, and it's quite large. So I'm going to set the font size to say 50 pixels. And I'm going to change also the line height under typography. So it's a little bit tighter. I'll bring it down to say 1.2. And then in this section, I can do a couple of things like center that text in the middle of the page and also center it in the middle of the actual, um, the height of that. So vertic centered uh, vertically and horizontally. So I've got that set up and then I can do a few things like um, specifically change the colors of these by going to adding this um, grouping around it and changing the color. So if I do that to each one of these, oops, I haven't done that properly. What I can do is add this little grouping around it, change the color, add that grouping and change the color. Now I think there was some text underneath this as well and a little line above the text. So if I wanted to add that line, I could put something in like a div and create that line. Just going to make sure that that section is loading this. There we go. So that it stacks 
um, vertically. So you can stack things vertically and horizontally. So I'm gonna stack it vertically. I'll give it a background color and I'm gonna set its height and width. So size and spacing, I'm actually gonna give this a height of say two pixels. Oh, that's not the right, that's not the right thing at all. So I'm gonna click undo, I've not selected the actual div that I've got here. That's what I wanna change the color of. Um, I'm gonna to go to background, I'll do that again. Background color, I'm gonna set the size and spacing. So the height is two pixels and the width might be 100 pixels, maybe a little more, 180. And what I'm gonna do is add some spacing above this. So maybe 40 pixels and 40 pixels. And then I can add that text underneath there with another heading. Just change that heading type. And I wanna copy and paste this text. If you know the content you want, you don't need to copy and paste anything. You can start to type, type away, which may save you a lot of time. Um, so I don't want that in the div. I'm gonna just move these around quickly. And again, that text is heavier than I want. So I'm gonna go into typography. Actually, this is where something like global, global styles comes in very handy. I'm gonna click save and go into these um, settings and go into the global styles. And I, this design, the headings aren't heavy. They're not thick like this. So I can actually go into this and change the weight of the styles of the headings. And that would change every single heading that I've got here. And if I click save, for example, and go back to this where I've got home and it's, um, and it's quite thick. If I go to about, you can see it's already changed that for us. So that's a great example of a good use of the global styles there. Um, and if I go back to home, you'll see it's starting to pick up that the new homepage that we've started to design. So I know we've been through a lot already. I'm really, really rushing this. Um, so I appreciate you if your brains are melting a little bit, um, but you can kind of already see the power of being able to create your own templates and say, in this situation, use this template. We've talked about um, landing pages with Nick already, um, and it could show the power of just being able to create a specific landing page um, and just use that uh, wherever you want, um, or create a custom landing page. You can even create landing pages where the content, you can get in there and edit the content um, without updating everything globally, or you can set things up so they're global as well. So that's super handy. Um, all right, I'm gonna add in a few more things. I'll get rid of this structure here, add section. I'll put this above the footer. And what else did I have in there? I think there's a couple of sections. Okay, we've got our latest projects, which is actually quite interesting. I'll, I'll try and get to that so we can really have a look at the power of um, creating some dynamic content there. So background color is dark. I think it's dark. Or is it the mid tone again? Yes, it's the darker one. So we've got that dark content there. And I think it actually has a background on it, which is a pattern. I'm gonna go in here and browse and find that pattern and just make sure that it's set to um, manual and make it 100% wide. I've got this little pattern here. And this is where that um, the, the feature projects show up. So in a minute, what I'll do is I'll add some, uh, something called a repeater and we can create an actual really customized loop for custom content there. Um, but while I'm here, what I might do is actually go into this here and do something where I put in what we call uh, columns. And you can see when I click columns, it gives me the ability to add them, the predefined um, specifically these are essentially shortcuts. You could make your own columns if you wanted to, um, but using this column layout, what, what I'm doing here is making this 50-50. And if I go back to my design here, I can get stuff like this heading and put that in one column. Oops, add heading. 
and then get the content and put that in there as well. So add text. And you can see I've got the basis of this happening. A few tweaks again, change that line height to one. Might have some space between these two. And there was again, a, a what we call a little divider here. And now I'm gonna introduce you to, I guess, a another trick, which is something called creating classes. And these are things that we can reuse multiple places on the website, the things that we style and wanna style them exactly the same way again. So if I give this a class of divider, I add that class. The styles that I created originally were placed onto what we call an ID. So I'm gonna copy these, paste them onto that class delete them from the divider. Make sure I've got the background in there. Oh, that's, I've deleted stuff too quickly. The height was two and the width I think was 180. Um, what have we got? No padding. Nope, two, it's not doing what I want. Height of two, there we go. Then I want to go to this margin here, size and spacing. Add some margin above this, 20 and 20. And now if I wanted to add a divider in here, I could do the same thing by adding a div and giving it the same class that I had before of divider. If I start typing that in, it will show up. Uh, for some reason, the height setting isn't working perfectly. I believe it would work on the front end. I might click save and have a look on the front end just to see if that's doing what I want. Yes, it is showing up perfectly on the front end, but that's essentially how you use classes. You could do this for a heading, for example, where you set them with certain colors or certain sizes, and you could say main heading in any situation and just use that same style. All right, but a couple more things here before I get onto this part where I add the dynamic content. I'm just gonna change this a little bit where I add some space above this. I'm gonna add an image, image, and I'll browse and find one of these placeholders here like this. Now I'm not gonna do this exactly the same with the two images, but what I can do is show you a couple of quick tricks with the spacing. I can put say a negative margin on there of say 50 pixels. And you can see that slightly overlapping like what I wanna do on my design. And then I think it had a soft shadow on there. So I'm gonna go into effects and I'm gonna add a quick shadow and maybe just change that so it's not really 100% see-through. And I can do things like saying how far I want this offset I want this inserted. So now I've got a shadow. I want it to go the other way, minus say 20 pixels and down 20 pixels. Now, if I click save, we've got this section, which is, it's similar. It's not perfect. I am trying to get through this pretty quickly, but it's starting to look similar to this layout that we've got here. And I am rushing purely because I wanted to show how to do some of this dynamic content, which is actually really exciting. Um, so I'll go back into this page here. I would add a heading in here. I'll change the color so we can see it. And I'll make sure I get that text. I'm not gonna do this one super perfectly. I'm just gonna get this in here so I can start looking at the, um, the next area. So we've got our section here, center this. All right, now the next thing I wanna add in is something called a repeater. And this is actually really, really powerful. Um, before I mentioned I had some projects set up. Now what the repeater does is it essentially queries some content that we may have created. So if you've created a blog post and you wanted to um, have a blog page, for example, you could use this. But then what about if you wanted to use that blog, those blog features somewhere else? Maybe you wanna show that in a footer on a specific page, or you wanted to say um, similar blog posts and you wanna create a custom repeater. 
that would be really, really hard if it wasn't already baked in to the theme that you've, you're using. But this gives us the ability to create our own query and then it will repeat that content as much or as little as we like. So I'm gonna say uh, this is a custom query and I'm gonna say this is for a specific post type or no, it's a, am I filtering taxonomies? It should be under here, categories, nope. What is that post type? Here we go, post type of our projects. And now that I've said that I want this to um, have a, a, a loop essentially that repeats itself for however many um, projects I have. There's four projects and you can already see it's created four copies of something there. So what I can do is in this first one, I can set this up exactly how I want. So I can put in, for example, an image and I can browse the content of that image and not, not actually see, stick a specific image, but pick um, image data. So pick the featured image. If I go insert, you can see that it's grabbing every single photo from each of these projects that I've got in my project library. And I can add stuff like um, the heading and again, change this to white so we can see it. Um, and that would be dynamic content. So we probably want this to be saying the name of that project. So title, insert, Oop, there we go, click save. And I might actually just minimize some of these things here. And in this repeater, I'll actually add a button. So button, and I would have that button go to view project. So view project, and that link, again, we want this to be our dynamic link. So we can go to the permalink and it's going to know now that all of this content is spe specific for um, each one of these projects. Now I've not styled this perfectly. I will change it a little bit just quickly. So it looks a little bit better. Um, here we go. I'll do a couple of things as well. So it's not full width. If I go to advanced size and spacing, I make this say 48 pixels wide, 48% wide. No, that's not doing what I want. Save that. I'm just gonna to go to the front end and we should see it's actually getting all of that information of each one of our projects. So it's actually getting it and loading it. It's not looking like how we want. I can change those settings, but it's already set up and linking to these projects that I've created. It's getting the content. I haven't set it up to grab the specific images. We haven't set it a template for that but you can already see that it is starting to come together. I'm gonna to change some of these things with the design. So if I go to this repeater, I'm gonna make sure this is set up um, with the layout, horizontal, and allow this to be multi-lined. I'm gonna make sure this is a width of, I think 48%. And then if I set this repeater to give a little bit of spacing around between them, I can say layout and just stretch these between either side. Now this div, I'm gonna want some space underneath it. Again, this isn't perfect. It's not exactly like the design, but if I click save now and go to that front end, we should have them all lined up. Now the rest of this is just tweaking the styling it's not quite like the actual design, like what I want, but you can see I've got the basis of this stuff already set up and it's pulling that information from a dynamic, a whole dynamic section of the website, which before this would have been, um, before Oxygen, I would have really struggled to do this without needing some custom code. So that is really, really powerful. Um, now the last thing I'm gonna do rather than fixing up those areas is I'm gonna look at some of these things like the reusable parts. So if I go into this um, reusable part here, I'm gonna open this here, open that footer. If I click open, what it will do is start to load this in. And 
Then I'm going to show you how I can add this content in on the fly and, and it will update everything. So again, if I just reference my design, I'm pretty sure I've got, yeah, the logo, some text. And I've also got another menu there, but I'm, I'm not going to add all of this right now. I'm just going to show you the power of um, creating some of this stuff where, when it's um, in this repeater. So I'll add a div, and I'll add an image and I'll browse for that same logo. And I'll add some text underneath this. I'll make sure this is white. And then that div, I don't want this to be super wide. So I'll just make it something like uh, the width 30%. And click save. And now if I'm gonna refresh this, I scroll to the bottom that's been updated on this home page but then if i go to any page here like about that's updated everywhere on the site because we've used that as a reusable part so if we start to set up the site correctly um, it becomes really really quickly to build stuff out i mean i think i've probably spent 50 minutes um, and i know i've been going really quick and i have done this before um, but I have been trying to capture as much of this in, in one setting um, as I could. Um, I know I've got one last thing that I'd like to show you before I kind of wrap this up, um, and that is the mobile settings. So I'm going to go back to this page here. We all know how important mobile phones are and people being able to view our work on different screens. Um, what Oxygen does, which is amazing, is it gives us the ability to view this on different screens. So this is classified as all devices, which is just basically the maximum width. And now we can preview it on what it would look like at 1120 or below. And we can scroll down and go, actually, that still looks pretty good. We'll leave that. Then we can go to a smaller size. What does it look like at less than that? And because we use columns, these actually fall into place um, automatically. Um, you can see that actually looks not too bad. I, I presume when we get too small, these are side by side next to each other. It's going to actually break. Um, so we'll see what happens if I go smaller again. It's That's still fine. We're actually looking pretty good. But this might be the sort of thing where you start to change font sizes for different screens. But lastly, I'll go to this small one. And all of that stuff is fine. But this here, um, that's probably getting too tight. So that might be something that you just change the the layout for this option and we go and have them go all in line for example go to the repeater and make sure this layout goes to vertical and then with this div we'd make this go to say 100 wide click save and now if we viewed this on a mobile phone it would change the layout just like that for that that um for that breakpoint or for that device size. Um, but all our other device sizes are exactly how we wanted them before. So perfect for the desktop. So it makes it really, really easy to quickly review stuff, how things are going to be on different types of devices and just tweak them accordingly, even though it does a lot of the hard work for us ourselves. All right, I'm gonna click save. I don't need to keep this work, but I'm gonna click save out of habit. And then I'm just gonna go back to this and just say thank you for everyone that was watching. Um, if you do want to take a, the course, I have a full course. It's, it's a, a fairly extensive course. There's nine modules. It's eight main modules and a bonus module. It takes people from the very, very, very start of getting started with Oxygen, but doing the same sort of thing as what we're doing there, where we start with a custom design and build it to an actual complete website. We, we build every single template and we build all of the sections together. Um, and as a part of that, I actually supply the design and people are free to use that. And the people that have been actually using that design and customizing it, um, I do a little tutorial at the start on how we can take that design file and customize it. And people have done some amazing work with the template that I've got. So it is 25% off. Um, so that's it. Hopefully that's been helpful. Um, and thank you for everyone taking the time out. And I'm going to hand this back to Nick. Awesome. Excellent. That was a, uh, 
a whistle a whistle stop <laughs> of offshore. You did, you did well. That was that was awesome. Actually, I was sort of uh, kept up with uh, all of that. Um, but uh, we had a couple of comments from people saying, "Is this going to be available on a replay as well?" Fortunately, it is. So um, if uh, you want to watch it again and go through it again, it will be up on the SmashGo YouTube channel uh, tomorrow afternoon. It'll be so you can go go through and see that. Uh, but again, the um, uh, what Corey is showing us tonight is really just a small part. Uh, of the oxygen builder, but really hopefully you got an idea of the, you know, what is achievable with it, and uh, the program that uh, or the courses put together, which uh, I've got as well, and have uh, started having a look at, is pretty awesome actually. So uh, it, you really do come away with a complete site. It was a difficult task to actually work out how much to show because I didn't want to take things too slowly and not show everything that was possible, but I didn't also want to. Um, uh, Right, you know, that, that was pretty much as fast as I could go. So I was trying to show how much stuff we could do. And I, I fully understand um, if people found that hard to follow. Um, but in the course, it really is really well paced out. Um, I think I said it's, it's nine modules, there's about 10 lessons in each, and some of them are like 20 minutes long. It's a lot, a lot of content. It's taken a lot of work to get it, get it done. And the feedback has been amazing. So Yes, it has been too. So uh, I know some people have taken the course who are developers, in fact, and they absolutely loved it because it made their work so much easier, a lot yep. quicker. And um, yeah, any, uh, yeah it, and it really works for anyone at any skill level. All right. Oh, so someone's asked, what does the course cost? Good question. Oh, it, it is uh, 200 US dollars. Um, it's a global market. So US dollars is what I've, what I've chosen to go with. Um, and it is 25% off. So what's that? Is that? hundred and fifty dollars i don't know there you go yeah i'm a designer not a mathematician so i can't work i can't work out percentages dollars off 25 percent so yeah 150 yeah oh is that what it was oh, i can't remember either work it out <laughs> so i've got a coupon code there if you do want to use it uh the coupon code is smash uh we've got a link for it as well maybe dro drop the link in yeah the i'll drop a link to the to the course um and you'll i'll just i'm just linking to the actual um page itself on the on the website um, that talks about the course if people are in, after in more information but when they if they are interested in purchasing it if they click the buy now just use the um the the code there smash and you'll get that discount um, and i'll leave that for uh february and march um just in case anyone catches the replay so once again i wanted to thank you nick for for having me on um and everyone who managed to to follow along there <laughs> Excellent, excellent. All righty. Well, hopefully there was uh, sort of uh, uh, enough there, ready to whet your appetite and uh, get you started. Uh, and um, but uh, certainly it's a very, very powerful uh, page builder, but uh, yeah, easy to uh, use once you get into it as well too. All righty. Well, before you jump in and uh, buy a course, uh, we have a prize tonight as well too, don't we, Corey? Yep. So uh, and that prize is. Uh, it's, what is it's it? the entire course. It's the it's, it's, it's the actual course. Yeah. So it's um, two hundred dollars value. So anyone who's watched that and, and went, I would like to do that course, and I'd like to do it for free. Well, this is a good opportunity to do that. So, all righty. Anyone want that? Hands up. Who wants it? Anyone else with their hands up? Well, we can take you out. <laughs> all right. <we've, laughs> We've got a special way of drawing this uh, as ever. We have our wheel of names. So everybody's name is in here, and. Um, and remember, you have to be here to win. So if uh, anyone's left, we haven't pulled any names out, so we're just going to spin the wheel. Um, if uh, anyone's left, then uh, we uh, redraw it again. So uh, because there's a few of us here, uh, if uh, it's you that's drawn out, feel free to uh, unmute yourself and say, I'm here, just so that I don't go and redraw it again. All right, drum roll, please, and let's, uh, let's give this a spin. Our lucky winner is oh Ned. Nick Kelly. <laughs> awesome. And yes, that is his real name. <laughs> Amazing. All right, you here, Ned? Let's just see if he's on screen. Oh. oh. He's gonna kick himself if he's not here. Yes, he is. He's uh, I can see Ned's here. He's not unmuting himself, which means he's probably gone to the loo or something like that. Hey mate. <laughs> Ah, oh, good day, Ned. How are you going there? Hey, good day. 
Perfect. Oh, congratulations there, Ned. Uh, that's all yours. Great. So I'll need to nice. get Ned. Ned, I'll need to get your details somehow. Um, can I get them from you, Nick? Yeah, we'll organise that. So uh, either Lovely. Ned, you can, you can drop your details in the chat, but I'll um, we'll connect you up uh, sort of uh, later tonight or uh, tomorrow, and then you guys can uh, sort it out uh, between yourselves. Perfect. Excellent. All right. And um, if anyone else uh, wants to um, carry on with the course, uh, the uh, link is in chat. So remember to save the chat as well too. Um, and um, but before you do that, we actually have uh, a couple a uh, couple more prizes. So when, once you've got uh, oxygen uh, and your website installed, you need somewhere to host it. So uh, we had uh, Nick Bryant who was uh, on the uh, call today as well too. He um, is with a company called uh, Wordify and they do uh, hosting. So um, let me just drop in to chat. Uh, their hosting company, and they've kindly offered uh, one year's worth of hosting for um, uh, anyone that, uh, or for two people uh, in that um, uh, that wants to uh, build a site or uh, move their site or whatever. So that's uh, that's worth I think ninety six dollars. I think for that particular plan, uh, yeah, you said it was ninety six dollars. It's the Unity hosting plan. So uh, we've got a couple of those to give away. He's just ducked off to go and put some kids to bed. So he said that uh, we can draw this for uh, anyone that's here. So anyone need some hosting? Well, you will do, won't you? <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's draw this. Uh, look, if you've um, if you don't need it, you can always uh, gift it to someone else. Uh, otherwise, it's a really good opportunity. They're a great uh, little hosting company too, as well. All right. First one is uh, we've got Russ. Russ McCurdy. You here, Russ? Where is he on screen? Yeah, I can see uh, Russ on screen. Hi, guys. How are you? Hey, you're Russ. How are you going there? Good, mate. Good. Congratulations, mate. So uh, you've got the um, uh, one of the hosting packages there. So yep. uh, we'll hook you up with the uh, the guys there, with Nick uh, there, and you can uh, sort that uh, out between yourselves. Yep, we will do. Thank you awesome. very much. Very grateful. Fantastic. All right, we've got one more from, uh, from Nick as well with the hosting. So let's draw that. <laughs> Come on, Diego. <laughs> oh, almost Diego. <laughs> it's Lee. <laughs> All right. Have we got Lee in the room here? All right. Oh, I think Lee may not be in the room. Three, two, one. Lee has disappeared. All right. We'll draw it one more time. This is harsh, isn't it? It's brutal. <laughs> All right, we've got John uh, McClurich. John, looks like John's he's, in the room. He's there. Awesome, Amazing. excellent. All right, John, you have uh, won that uh, hosting as well. So we'll uh, organize to uh, get your details and hook you up uh, with Nick tomorrow as well too. All right, so remember the uh, replay of this is on uh, YouTube, the YouTube channel, Smash Go YouTube channel. It'll be there tomorrow. Uh, the uh, link is in, uh, in chat, so um, uh, you can grab it there. If you want to know more about uh, WordPress as well, uh, the uh, WordPress meetups throughout the country have actually uh, uh, promoted this event uh, tonight as well too. But uh, there are local uh, groups uh, all around Australia and New Zealand, in fact, all throughout the world, uh, and uh, they have free, um, uh, free meetups. So if you want to, if you've got a WordPress site, you want to learn some more, uh, or you need to get some advice or whatever, there are a heap of WordPress sites. So you just need to go to wpaustralia.org. Uh, that link is in chat, and uh, they have uh, all of the groups that are in uh, Australia and New Zealand in that. Even though it says WP Australia, it's uh, Australia and uh, New Zealand. Or if you do have uh, a WordPress website, if you have a look at your dashboard as, when you first log in, uh, there's an area there for meetups, and you'll see that uh, you can find a meetup uh, near you. It's just one of the informational panels that's in your dashboard when you've logged into uh, WordPress. And so you can click on that and uh, invite. they're free to go to, uh, very welcoming. Uh, there are a lot of online ones at the moment because we haven't been able to meet in person, uh, but uh, some of the offline ones are starting to uh, start up uh, as well too. All right, uh, have, I, have I got everything off? Oh, uh, if, uh, 
if you've enjoyed tonight uh, and you want to find out a wee bit more about it or you want to come to other sessions, these are held every single week. We have uh, uh, awesome guest speakers uh, like uh, Corey, who is here tonight. Uh, and uh, so we have a different speaker each night. Uh, you can join the Facebook group, the Business Owners Smashing it Online Facebook group. Go and join that. Uh, that's where we uh, have all of the announcements of the topics and the events uh, that are uh, coming up. And again, that link is in chat as well too. And uh, the session for next week, uh, next week actually is interesting too. It's all about TikTok. So if you wondered about the social media platform called TikTok, uh, it definitely is one to watch because the person's going to be uh, talking about this, our guest speaker, she is a Facebook specialist. Uh, she runs ads for uh, sort of companies on Facebook, and they are moving over to TikTok because there are a heap of opportunities over there that are just totally untapped. Advertising is insanely uh, competitive in terms of being very cheap as well, and uh, you're getting sort of a, uh, uh, as good as or better bang for buck as well. So, uh, so if you think it's uh, just a video channel for young people, uh, it's not. Uh, there's some uh, businesses out there um, making some uh, uh, really good inroads with that marketing on uh, TikTok as well. You don't need to be a star or a movie star or anything like that. There, there are ways of uh, using TikTok to do it. So come along next week to uh, find out about how you can use TikTok in uh, your business. So that's a wrap for tonight. Let's give uh, Corey a big round of applause for uh, sharing all of that with us tonight. And um, remember, it's on YouTube. And uh, I look forward to see you all again next week. Go and have a great night and uh, we'll catch you again. Thanks, guys.